the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So, friends, welcome to the first Sunday in Lent, of Lent, in Lent, through Lent, but it's the first, the first Sunday, um, and hopefully you're able to make it to an Ash Wednesday service. I got to say, Reverend Patsy and I were impressed. This is the most amount of CFW families we have ever seen at an Ash Wednesday service. So kudos to you for walking across the street and going into that church over there. And, and getting, getting some ashes on your forehead. No, it was really cool. Uh, it was great. Collectively, I think it was probably one of the more well-attended Ash Wednesdays that we've had uh, uh, since I've been here, at least. Um, and so it, and it, was, it was just uh, um, enriching uh, to experience it as a full community. Um, and and if, you, if you weren't able to do it, so it's just a, a kickoff that we place these ashes on our forehead uh, that uh, we, re we remember our mortality. We have only so many days here. But we're also shifted to our eternity of living the eternal life through Christ here and now. Not just waiting for the afterlife, but here and now, this new life. So friends, this is, uh, uh, in Lent, we, we, we look really a lot um, at, at our basics, and our, our basics of, uh, uh, at St. Mary's, we break into four tenets. And these are four tenets that Patsy and I use for all of our baptismal courses and our confirmation courses. And they guide, really, our just the theology here at St. Mary's. So these four tenets of what it means to, to really be embraced and loved by God. Um, here at St. Mary's. So the first thing we want you to know is that you are created by God. Number one, created by God. You might be like, yeah, duh. Sometimes we struggle with that or truly really embrace what it really means to be created by God. That you weren't just created by your mother and father. Uh, that that there, there's this incredible God who has a vision for you and created you before you even were a physical thing that happened. Like, you have a mission that God says. So God's doing his love in the world and sends you out there, right? Like that? Yes. Like our brand new baby, yeah. Uh, and so that's created by God, number one. The second thing we want you to know is that this, this God loves you. And we talked about that before. Sometimes we struggle with that. Does God really love me? Let's make it easier. Do you think God even likes you? <laughs> Remember we talked about that one time? You might love your spouse. Do you like your spouse? You want to hang out with them? You know? All right? So these are things. So love is, yeah, love is cool, but do you like? Right? So does God like you love you? Yeah, we believe that. Then third, uh, no matter how bad you muck this up, you are saved by God. He saves you through Jesus Christ. And then finally, our fourth is that you are embraced by God. It's the final part of our confirmation process in baptismal. Do you know that this, this church is... is we mean church, as in the Catholic Church, small c, the church global, is this manifestation of Jesus Christ that embraces you, and which is us. So we all embrace each other, so we're the arms of Jesus Christ embracing one another. Created by God, loved by God, saved by God, embraced by God. There's your sermon series. Go home, we'll see you at Easter, okay? So today, just really quickly, I want to just jump on what does it really mean to be created by God, and what does this Old Testament reading have anything to do with that, and who is the serpent anyways? Um, and, and it reminds me of a time in, uh, um, in, in, my, in my bachelor days, in my more formative years, <laughs> as Gus Fitzgerald would say, uh, that uh, there was a, um, we were living in this rent control apartment in Santa Monica, and you know, so tiny little, tiny little apartment, and my, my buddy Brian and I uh, were like, we gotta, gotta put shelves. I have all these books and books and books, and I, and I gotta put them somewhere. It wouldn't fit to put a full-on bookshelf, so we went to Ikea, which if you're familiar with LA, Ikea just way out outside of Dodge, and it's a far drive away, and anything in L.A., which is normally 20 minutes, would be an hour, so if it's an hour, it's like two hours, um, and of course, we went like on Saturday at noon, so it took forever. We got back, we set this thing up, and it's like these three nice big wood structures, and it's beautiful wood, and then you would put these shelves in there, super sturdy, right into the wall. It could handle heavy books, like so almost you can like hang on it, even my big self. Um, and so we were so excited. So we, we busted it open. He's now actually a part-time architect. So he's got all the, the, the numbers. He can figure this all out. We got that little string with the dust, you know, and get everything straight. Uh, and, and we realized that there wasn't really true drywall behind it. It was cinder block. Uh, and so we we're like, okay, had to change the drill bit. We're not playing around here. We're gonna go, this is gonna make it even better. We can like put even heavier things on here. And we drill in, broke a drill bit, did it again, 
got all these in, and it was so sturdy, like, good. And then we're just going to pop these shelves in because, you know, those Swedish Ikeans make it so easy for us silly Americans to make these things. And so we're just going to pop these shelves in. That's all you got to do. And then screw them in. So we're popping the pop. It won't go in. The shelf won't go in. It's the wrong size. It won't go in. I'm like, ah, you can't just return this stuff. We just drilled this into the wall. And Ikea is out in Bumble, right? So we're like, this is not going to work. So I open up the, the instruction manual because I wanted to check. <laughs> I was trying to check to make sure the measurements were right. You're ahead of me. Because on the first page of said manual, it says, make sure you connect the shelves to the three structures before putting on the wall. We jumped a step because we didn't read the manual. Because we're men. <laughs> men don't need manuals. We got tools and these brains, right? We don't need directions when driving. And we certainly don't need a manual. Oh, I'm sorry, kids. So instruction manuals were these physical pieces of paper that came. Um, so we didn't have YouTube to like watch someone say, hey, this is how you put the shelf together, right? You know, we, we, we had to read and read this physical thing that you would recycle. Um, and so uh, we tried to pull these things off, um, but we broke drill bits getting them on. Um, and, and we thought it would be even better to start drilling around to loosen it up, which just created, it just created chaos. It just became a mess. And we didn't have to get second platforms to cover up the holes, which might still be there um, to this day. Um, it was a mess. Uh, it ended up working out. Um, but friends, hopefully see where, where I'm going with this, is that um, when we ditch this instruction manual for our own lives, um, chaos can happen. Uh, and, and oftentimes when you open up whatever appliance and everything you get, the first thing they want you to see is that instruction manual. Uh, so you know, even if it seems like it's the most simplest thing in the world, the easiest thing to use, there might be lots of different uh, features that you might miss, or simple things like make sure you follow the right steps. Uh, if not, chaos will follow. The Garden of Eden is this beautiful gift that God gave humankind. And it's, it's, it, it, it's gorgeous. It's, it, can, can we put that up, Tom, that picture we have here? So this image of fun wine. So this is what well, I love, all the different art we can find of, of just. And uh, so th th this is one of them. And it's just, uh, uh, it's lush. It's full. And, and in Deuteronomy, uh, you know, God says, you know, I, I give you all of this. You, you got luscious trees, and there's even lions not trying to eat you, and, and, uh, and, and fruit, and mangoes, and waterfalls. You can have all of this. So, and, and this is not me. This is the Bible talking. It said, the Lord God took the man, and if you have one of these, that doesn't say Lent two, but Lent one. Uh, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. Nice and easy. Just till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat. Of every tree of the garden, every tree of the garden. This is not a God who's saying, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. It's all yours. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Because if you eat of that tree, you will die. And later on, the woman is talking to the serpent, and the serpent refers to it as being that that tree is in the middle. It's right in the middle of it all. This, this tree, God says, listen, everything else is yours. But the tree of good, and li of, of, of good and evil, of knowledge, let me take care of that. Right? Let, me, let me take care of that business. You don't have to worry about judgment. You don't have to worry about evil and good and all that stuff. You just till the ground. Show up each day. Enjoy the creation, because I am the creator that I created for you. Work the energy of love that I give you. But the, the, the part of steering how life goes and what's at the center of everything, that's got to be me and just let me do that. You just follow the direction I lead you. So then it gets better. So what's the second image here? Uh, so then I, I, I love this. Because, because it's very hard to find an image of the serpent with four legs. Because <laughs> remember, it's not a snake that shows up. It's a serpent because God punishes the serpent by what? Removing the legs. It makes you and I just on your belly. So this one, which is kind of weird because it actually gives a human face on top of this four-legged creature. It's very odd. 
Um, but this, it says, again, this is what the Bible's saying, uh, now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. Crafty. So the Hebrew of that uh, helps us a lot. That adjective is a very healthy, positive adjective. It means resourceful. Someone who seeks. Someone who can just figure things out when they have limited resources. They're crafty. They're, they're clever. That's the human race. We're, we're, very, we're very crafty, y'all. We, we are not extinct. We are no near extinct. There's a lot of species that are, that are near extinction or have been extinct. Dinosaurs were pretty big. They didn't make it. We're still going strong. We are crafty people. And God gave us these resources to be crafty. And so I, I'm gonna, just going to take a little jump, theological jump here. That, that, that serpent is internally in us. That's that original sin that, that's inside of us. We always want more. And yes, we want to go more in our spiritual life, but we can't go so far where we try to act like we're God. We put ourselves in the driver's seat too often. People say, you know, I'm driving Jesus in my shotgun. No, Jesus is in the driver's seat. You are in shotgun. That's, the phrase is horrible. You're, Jesus is not riding shotgun with you. Jesus is driving the car. You're in shotgun or in the backseat saying, God, I trust you because I trust you with the directions. Men don't trust the directions, but, 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 so, but I, I trust you, Lord. Hmm, you can take down the weird image. I know it's a little strange. Um, but but so, so for us, we have to be really aware of when we're going to bypass the directions, throw out the user's manual that God gives us, which I, I know this great user's manual. Have you read it lately? You know, so you got this user's manual, the Bible. You're like, oh gosh, I'm reading it so much. Okay, well, I know this guy, Jesus. He is the physical manifestation of the user's manual. <laughs> and he was gifted to us to live within us. So that brings us back to our prayer life of praying and listening to the voice of the Spirit so you can make sure of all the times your bells can go off when you are overstepping or ignoring or forgetting about who's really in control. It's easy to do. We get worried, we get anxious, and we start trying to solve the problem ourselves. We, we get lost in our grief, we get lost in our pain, but we forget who's, who's, who's driving the ship. It, it doesn't matter how, how dark it gets, if you can just say, God, I, I, I'm, I mean, God is all about relationship. I trust you, I'm going to lean into you, and I'm going to follow you, God, And because you're my Father who loves me, who created me, who loves me, who saved me, who embraces me. You'll put people around me, you'll give me the resources that are needed. You said every tree is here, there's resources here for me to take. Open my eyes to a God, because I really need you. When we think we have a better plan than God, we, we lost the battle. What, sometimes we think we have a great vision. It's like, no, I know exactly what I want. I know exactly what I want. God, can you bless that? <laughs> God, I think, I think I know what's going on here, but God, I want you to tell me what you want and, and help me to follow that. Put it right in front of me. It, we have a search going on right now as a church. What's next for us? It, does it create anxiety? Sure. Does it give us wonder what's happening next at the church? Sure. And what we have to be aware of now, friends, this is why a search is always a great time for spiritual formation. Do we catch ourselves reaching for the apple of thinking that we have the perfect answer for this time for our church? I know exactly what we need. <laughs> I know exactly what's right for this church. I know exactly what the vision is. And that's why our denomination slows it down and says, hold up. We got to hear what God is up to. And that takes a while. Jacqueline Moore uh, on Vestry at the Vestry Retreat said, she was any time that I try to think that I had the perfect vision for my life, God always came and just threw it all away and then revealed something most amazing in my life. She's like, that's how I met my husband. That's how I ended up here at Stewart. How I found St. Mary's because I just let it go and say, oh, oh, oh God, you, you have something greater. So we're in that place now. We, 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 we might all have our own thoughts and ideas about the search. Say, okay, th this would be good. Then surrender to God. Maybe it aligns with you, God, maybe it doesn't, but let me be open, God, to what you see, because it could be beyond what I could either ask or imagine. There might be something that we couldn't even compute and even think about that could be possible. 
So collectively, we have our temptation to take the fruit as a church. Let go. Trust that God is clearly steering the ship here. And the more that we clearly allow him to steer the ship and work through us and fill us and feed us. I went to that volunteer uh, thank you dinner just last Saturday. It's alive. The spirit is alive here. You guys are on fire for God, all right? So, so, so just keep on saying yes, and we just keep on saying yes and keep on showing up. God's going to do the rest. We don't have to touch that tree. He will give fruit everywhere else because it is sprouting. Stephen Ministry is going. Wednesday meal is going. The staff is growing. There's great things going on here. People are finding the way to say marriage. Just trust it and say, okay, God, you got it. Two new babies. Two new babies here today. And then I ask you, so that's collective, and then individually, where do you find yourself reaching for the apple? Be aware of it because sometimes it's not intentional. None of us would be like, oh, I'm smarter than you, God. I got this one figured out. But just be aware of it because it comes up just, just sometimes indirectly. I'll be obsessing and thinking about something and trying to solve it myself. I'm like, have I gone to God yet? <laughs> have I gone to him and say, God, please help me with this issue. Please help me find a solution. And then organically, God's going to take care of it. So don't blame it on the some serpent and be like, that's oh, his, it, he, he made me do it. No, that, be aware. That's our original sin. And that sin, that, that, that craftiness can be user of our greatest gifts, but sometimes it can get the best of us and think that we can be God. That's all those temptations that Jesus endured up on that mount. You can be more powerful. You can deserve all the honor. You have the greatest title. No. God does. Trust put the apple down, <laughs> pick up the user manual. <laughs> and that's your prayer life, that's your worship life, that's your word life, that's praying with others. Listen and follow. God's got this. He created us all. He loves us all. He saved us all. And he embraces us all. Thanks be to God.